Greetings one and all, I'm Nick DiVirgilio and today we're talking about miking the kick drum and snare drum with two mics on each drum. Let's do it. The techniques I'm gonna talk about today are super easy to do and they work well all the time. So if you're at home and you have a small setup, you could definitely do this. If you work on a live stage, like in a house of worship setting, you can use these techniques as well. They work well live, they work well in the studio, so let's go. So let's start with the snare drum. I picked two mics that are just classic go-to mics that work every time, and almost everybody has at least one of these in their mic locker. I'm talking about the Shure SM57. These mics are used in recording studios all the time and just about every live stage all the time. That's just because they just work well and sound really good without having to do much to them. When I say two mics on the snare drum, you don't necessarily always need the second mic, but if at home you have enough inputs to have a second mic on your snare drum, I would say go for it because the snare buzz that's on the bottom of the snare, that sound is really the life of the drum. The top mic will pick it up, your overheads will pick it up a little bit, but if you have the ability to just sneak it in underneath the top mic in your mix, you'll really get a lot of life out of your snare drum. Placing the microphones is really easy to do and the way I do it is just the way I do it. There are other techniques that other people use, but this is pretty run of the mill and I've seen this in countless studios and on countless live stages, so I know this works well. I'm about maybe an inch above the head and right about the rim. I'm pointing the microphone at the center of the drum just to try and get as, as much bleed to not go into the microphone. It's definitely gonna pick up hi-hat and it's gonna pick up rack tom no matter what you do, but you wanna alleviate that as much as possible and SM57s do a great job at that. Now for the bottom microphone, I'm just about two or three inches below the bottom head pointed right at the snare wires. I wanna point it away from the hi-hat as much as possible and away from the kick drum as much as possible, but again, you're gonna get a little bit of bleed of those instruments into the microphone. The key thing to do about having that bottom microphone is you have to put the microphone out of phase. Now what that means is it's gonna flip the waveform. If on your input, if you're recording at home and your interface does not have a phase button on it, most of the time in any DAW, the most simple EQ will have a phase button on there. If there's no phase button anywhere around, what you're gonna do inside your DAW is go into that track and flip the waveform. In Pro Tools, it's called inverting it. You highlight the waveform, hit invert, and it turns the waveform upside down. Thankfully, most modern interfaces now have phase buttons on them. So you wanna flip the microphones out of phase because they're both pointing in opposite directions, basically pointing at each other. When the microphones are out of phase, the sound of the snare drum is not as full bodied. It's a little thin sounding. When they're in phase, you're gonna get all the life, all the beef, all of the, the width and the high end out of the drum you want. And that's really about it. You don't really have to do much else. Just make sure the bottom mic is out of phase from the top mic and you're good to go no matter what mics you're using. I'd like to mention a few other mics before I get into the sound of the drum here. These are great honorable mentions and you can't go wrong with any of these microphones. Like the Telefunken M80, the Audix i5, and the Sennheiser E604 are great snare drum microphones. And that's just to name a few. There's a lot of other great dynamic microphones you could check out on Sweetwater.com. Okay, now let's listen to this snare drum. I'm gonna do a few different things for you when you listen back. Look at the text on the screen so you know exactly what you're hearing. I'm gonna play the snare with the snare wires on and off, and then you'll hear just the top mic, just the bottom mic, both mics together, and then we'll talk some more. Here we go. Now the question is, how much of that bottom mic do you want to put into your mix? Well, it depends on the style of music you're playing. Soft and light music like jazz is great to have a little more of the snare bottom microphone. Now this is my opinion, how I like to hear it. Other engineers and producers will do it their way. It's how I like to do it. Music like funk and R&B, hip hop, that kind of stuff, a little less snare bottom is usually good because you want to hear the tightness of the top head and every little stroke. So it just depends on what you're working on, but to have that ability to come in and out with the snare bottom sound is a really great thing. Let's hear the microphones again with a regular groove in the background. Here we go. Now 
Now I'd like you to hear these snare drum microphones with the other microphones in the room. When you're recording, when you're in a live situation, you're not just gonna have only the snare mics on, you're gonna have your overheads, your kick drum mic going, and all that kind of stuff. So now let's check these mics out with just a basic groove happening. Here we go. It is slight, but you should have heard a little more life and a little more of the nuance from that bottom mic, especially when I played the ghost notes in my snare hand. Some tricks you can use when you're in your recording studio and you're messing with the sound of your drums is to compress the bottom snare mic a lot. Like really go over the top with it and then put that into the mix with the top mic and hear the difference that it makes. It's gonna, you're gonna add a lot of like breathiness and an in and out kind of push and pull in the sound of the drum. It's fun to do. And that's basically it to get a good snare drum sound with two microphones. It's pretty easy to do. Remember to flip the phase. But above and beyond all of that, no matter what you're doing, you have to make sure the instrument you're playing sounds good first. So make sure your snare drum is in tune, got good heads on it, you dampen it well. It sounds like you want it to sound from sitting behind the kit. Because no matter how good the microphones are that you're using, if the instrument you're playing doesn't sound good, the microphones are just gonna pick up a not so good sounding instrument. So make sure your instrument sounds good first. Now onto the kick drum technique. This is again, super simple to do. You have one microphone on the inside of the drum and one on the outside. The microphone on the inside of the drum is a dynamic microphone and the microphone on the outside is a large diaphragm condenser. Sometimes ribbon microphones are really great options as well to use for the outside of the drum. But today we have a large diaphragm condenser. The mic I have on the inside of the drum is the SE V-Kick. It's a very cool kick drum microphone that has some filters on it where you can scoop out the mid-range and things like that. I have it set completely flat, but some other great options that are used all the time are the Shure Beta 52, the AKG D112, the Telefunken M82, and the Audix D6, just to name a few. Again, there's a ton more fantastic kick drum microphones on the market. Contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or go to sweetwater.com for any of those microphone options. On the inside of the drum, I have the microphone about halfway in pointed directly at the beater of the drum. I'm sure you've seen it many times going to live shows. You'll usually see the microphone right at the hole of the kick drum. That's fine to do, but if you have the ability to put the mic on the inside, you're gonna get a little bit more low end and definitely get the snap from the beater. The reason most of the time they're not putting the microphone inside the drum with the hole is because the hole makes it really hard to do. You have to get a stand that's really low to the ground and it's. It's kind of cumbersome unless you have a big enough hole to use. But the hole in the front of this kick drum head makes it so I can put the mic on the inside and which is a good thing. The mic on the outside of the drum is placed away from the hole because air comes out that hole every time I hit the kick drum beater on the head. It pushes a lot of air. Too much air hitting the microphone will ruin that large diaphragm condenser. Same with a ribbon microphone. So you put it away from the hole. It'll handle the SPL, the loudness, just away from the hole. And what you're looking for out of that mic is a little bit rounder sound. It's gonna pick up more of the drum kit. You're gonna get a little bit more of the oomph you're looking for. A technique that I like to use with that outside mic is to use a low pass filter on that channel. Basically take out all the high end and only have the low end out there. Blend that in with the inside mic, gives you a nice warm tone. You could leave it wide open with no EQ at all too and blend the two together. You get lots of options by having one on the inside and one on the outside. So let's check out the kick drum. The snare wires are off, I'm just gonna do a basic few hits, you'll hear just the inside mic, then just the outside mic, then the two blended together, and then we'll play a beat after that. Here we go. Now let's hear these two microphones in a groove. And what you're gonna notice when you're just hearing those microphones is the rest of the kit coming through the microphones. So see what that sound sounds like. And then you can adjust your EQ and other things to that.
Now let's hear those kick drum microphones with everything else going. The snare drum microphones, the overheads, and so on. Here we go. So with those two microphones, you definitely have options in your sound. A good trick to try with the, either of the microphones is to scoop out some of the low mid. With kick drums, the troubling frequencies usually are between 300 and 500, the low mid. So if you scoop that out a little bit, it usually kind of warms up the sound a little bit, gives you more snap, and then you can goose a little bit of low end if you need to and just get a really big, huge sound. Really good for rock and roll. Before we end this video, I wanna mention a few other mics you could check out if you'd like. I mentioned ribbon microphones you can use on the front of the kick drum. The Royer R121 is a great option. The AEA N8 is another great option. In fact, we sell bundles of these microphones here at Sweetwater, like a 57 and a Royer R121. So you have a kick drum and a snare mic, but you can also use those same two microphones on a guitar cabinet, which is a great combination used all the time. So these mics all have multiple uses. Other mics to mention for inside of the kick drum are boundary microphones. We've done that a lot here at Sweetwater Video Studio and in the recording studios, and they work well. You get a little more snap with boundary microphones, like the Beta 91, the SE BL8, the Bayer Dynamic TG D71, or the Sennheiser E901 are all great options for boundary microphones. Put one of those on the inside of the kick drum, and then maybe a dynamic microphone in the hole. It's a great combination used on the live stage quite often. But really, that's about it. Easy miking of these two drums with two microphones. Remember, flip the phase on the bottom snare microphone, put your large diaphragm condenser or your ribbon microphone away from the hole on your kick drum head, blend the sounds of the two mics together, and you're rocking and rolling. If you'd like any more information on any of the mics I mentioned here in today's video, just contact your Sweetwater sales engineer, go to sweetwater.com. All of those microphones are there on our fantastic website and then just have fun making lots of great music. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Cheers.